Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about a specific instance for when we construct classes with just one parameter and a little technique to make our code a little bit safer. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So on CPP reference, I want to go ahead and direct you towards the search here and we're going to look for the word explicit. And this is going to be something that you can optionally add to your constructors, but I will hopefully convince you by the end of this video that it's something you should probably do. So if we go ahead and take a look at this, we're going to go ahead and see that it is something that has to do with this idea of not allowing implicit conversions. Okay, so this idea that the compiler cannot just convert some data type to another. I think this will be easiest to see with an example here, and then we'll revisit the CPP reference page just to see the idea. So what I've got set up here is a custom type here, UDT for user defined type. I've got a constructor here that takes an integer. Again, today's lessons focused on constructors that just take one parameter. So we've got one integer here and you can go ahead and see how this function is defined here as a little review for you. Nothing crazy. I assign one of the member variables to I and then I just print it out. Okay. And I'm going to actually use this uh, user defined type here, create one instance of this object, set it to 500, and then we'll go ahead and just run this. Okay, so not anything too crazy at this point. It is 500, and we can see this. But as you can imagine, sometimes what we do is we get a little bit lazy in our code, and maybe we do things like 500f here, and we make this a float. And in fact, let's make this a little bit more interesting and just add some decimal points here. And go ahead and ask yourself what the result's going to be here. Is it going to be 500? Is it going to be something else? Well, I'll recompile, rerun it, and still 500. And you might uh, understand this if you understand rules on casting. And basically, the way that C++ and many other programming languages will convert this value at runtime is they'll just truncate and get off the decimal point. But what I'm a little bit more worried about here is actually how this type was created. You see, as a user here or a client of this class who's just using this, I might have used it wrong. Why am I passing floating point values? Did I pass in the wrong variable? Why is this magic number here? And there's a way to protect against that, and that's with the explicit keyword. So let me go ahead and type explicit here. And I'll go ahead and recompile, rerun, and well, no change here. Okay, so explicit hasn't done anything quite yet. So how do I go ahead and use this or what is it protecting against? Well, again, what it's protecting against is implicit conversions. So if I actually rewrite this code in a different way, such as this, and occasionally you'll see this on constructors, now we'll actually get an error at compile time, and you'll see that there is some attempted conversion from a float to some other value here. So in this case, this float is trying to convert to an integer, but we're saying, hey, we want to be really explicit. Do not automatically do any conversions here. So let's go ahead and just show the correct form. So if I do this, this is um, still um, not quite correct. Conversion from int to non-scalar type UDT requested. Let me say, okay, this is again, a good thing. We can't construct U1 here from the value 500. So maybe this is something that you've seen in other C++ code and have been confused about, but well, we can put in the curly braces here and go ahead and construct this object with 500 here. So let's go ahead and pause for a minute because you're like, okay, Mike, what exactly are you showing me here? I just showed you this new syntax for initializing an object here. I showed you that, well, let me go ahead and get rid of this explicit keyword. And then all of a sudden I, I showed you something where I said, well, you can actually initialize objects doing something like this and running the program. And again, seeing that this in fact creates a instance of UDT here with 500 here. But again, the explicit keyword avoids uh, this from being allowed here, this sort of implicit conversion to some other type here. Okay, so the compiler is not guessing for us. And that's generally a very good thing. We don't want our compilers to guess because as our code gets very big, that can cause a problem. And then what I showed here is this idea of, well, if we 
initialize with our constructors things in curly braces here, then we're not allowed to have what is known as narrowing, where the compiler just converts the type here. So if I explicitly say, hey, this is a float, and I try to compile, it's going to say narrowing conversion is not allowed here. Now, I can still do 500, but you can see now that our code is just a little bit safer by using the explicit keyword. So in general, as a design principle, or if you're making classes, I would say to default to making your constructors explicit. It might not always be the case that you do this because oftentimes you'll see me work with things like uh, math data types and so on, where I don't care if the conversion is happening, but I would in general always default to be a little bit more careful and try to do explicit and then also use the list initialization here, which protects you against this idea of an automatic conversion by narrowing down the data type. And just these little changes here, I think can make a big difference if you're scaling or building larger C++ projects, or it's also information to people who are using your classes that they know, hey, we should really be careful what data types we're using. And I think in general, that's a good thing for your C++ code. So folks, this is a sort of short mini lesson, and maybe it'll also debunk or dispel or make less uh, mysterious these different ways of creating actual instances of objects in C++. So now you'll know why you have those little curly braces sometimes you see in modern C++, or why you might see the word explicit. So if you found this lesson useful, make sure to like and then subscribe so you don't miss other useful lessons on designing classes. Now I've been getting pretty deep into this series, which has been a lot of fun. So I hope you have been learning a lot of great C++ here and we'll continue learning in the future. We'll see you next time, folks.